told the boys, and it was real dark, this bush was on. It was really dark. And all we had was a campfire. And Pete was one of my right hand guys. But, and so uh, his duty was going to be to put the fire out and, and make sure everything was out. So uh, he had the lantern, and so I was telling the story at the campfire, and I don't know how many of you guys, it, it was a bloody eyed fox. And I told, you know, the bloody eyed fox, the Indians tied uh, the, uh, them to the tree, and when the rain came around the moon at night, the bloody eyed fox would come out and get claw them, you know. And I really poured it on that night. And uh, it was really scary. And so uh, when uh, Pete uh, put the fire out, he was coming down, you know, with the lantern. He was walking down, and, uh, and all the boys had already gone to, to the the camp, and he had about three guys with him, though, and uh, he, he was talking, he, and I was hiding in the bushes, and uh, he said, I don't believe that crap that the banker said about the bloody-eyed fox, and I went, all right, and Pete stood there, you know, and he had the lantern like this, and them other guys left him, he, he was there by himself, and he fell. And that lantern broke, and it scared. That lantern broke, and there was glass when they were, I run, you know. I got the beat, <laughs> and, and he was okay. But, boy, I had never scared another boy, Pete, to this day. When I got when I got back, Pete, I didn't have any trouble. I got him up, and I said, it was me, it was me. So we went we went to the uh, camp, and I don't know who the boys were, Pete. But you might know them, but I couldn't find them. And I really got scared. And I looked and looked. And finally I went in to go to bed, and they, was, they would not leave my hut that night. <laughs> so, Pete, in behalf of getting scared and everything, here's a little deal for you. And uh, Pete, is, uh, Pete was another one of the boys that really done well in our troop. And uh, we grew up together. And I'd like for you to tell them a little about yourself. Well, first, this is one of the finest men I've ever known in my life. <laughs> life would not have been complete without Smokey the Bear around. If you remember, you used to wear a campaigner hat. Uh, and as far as the Bloody Eyed Fox story goes, I've used that on some of my troops over the years, but I've never had quite the success that <laughs> Uh, I don't want that. Oh, really? A couple of things that have happened that I can remember is Troop 12. We told you about one New Orleans trip. We took another trip down to New Orleans, uh, and everybody wanted to go down Bourbon Street, but Decker would not let Boy Scouts run down Bourbon Street. So during the middle of the day, he draws the bus right down the middle of Bourbon Street, <laughs> and that was all we saw of Bourbon Street. And another time on a, one of our Alabama trips, Everybody was cutting up and having a real good time, wouldn't shut up and go to sleep. And as I recall, Decker comes with boiling out of the tent about 10, 30, 11 o'clock and pulls everybody out in nothing but their underwear at Oak Mountain State Park. And, and there was nothing but rocks at Oak Mountain State Park. So that we all had to go out and find wood for a campfire and we couldn't come back till we did and we couldn't put any more clothes on. And there was no wood to be found anywhere in Oak Mountain State Park. I don't remember that. You don't remember that. <laughs> a lot of things you don't remember. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. But as far as myself, I, uh, I work with the State Department of Industrial Relations, uh, the penny office. I don't handle jobs. I give out money. If you want a job, I can't help you. Uh, I've been with them about uh, nine years or so now and uh, enjoy that job. And one other thing, you wonder where Billy's hair went. I can tell you exactly where his hair went. We were working on the cycling merit badge many, many years ago, and we had bikes in the back of the truck. Billy was sitting in the back of the truck, and a bike fell over and knocked Billy out on his head. He hasn't been quite the same since, and I think it's what, that's what happened to Billy. And it was Pete's bike. It was my bike. <laughs>
joined, uh, I guess it was 61 or 62, uh, Bryant and Sterling and Steve and, and Donnie and so many of them were, were uh, I guess, from about second class to first class and so on. And I really uh, just felt like a real part of, of an organization. I really looked up to these guys. To me, uh, <clears throat> Billy and Tommy and all you guys, I was just a tenderfoot, and Mr. Gower uh, passed me off on my tenderfoot, and I, uh, of course, I didn't, I, I, re I, only, I only knew, I think, two or three people, Herb, and uh, a boy named Alfred Starr, that I think was a member of the church, and uh, that was about the only people that I had known at all in that church, and I just looked up to these guys, uh, I believe Sterling, Barlow at the time was, uh, was one of the senior patrol leaders, and then I think, well, during that during that time, several of the guys, uh, Tommy and Billy, and well, they there were some assistant senior patrol leaders and so on. Anyway, I really looked up to uh, to these guys, and uh, it made me feel. And of course, I did not realize it at the time the influence of the two twelve uh, and my scouting. Uh, career life has played in, in my life and my mom got played such a big part in it and my dad and, and then it what Troop 12 did for me I was at least able to give some small influence to my brothers uh, Joe who's here Bobby who's at Camp Shelby right now uh, James and Paul and because of it I just feel like I'm you know a very small part uh, of Troop 12 and a, a small part, and I think everybody here and everybody affiliated with Troop 12, whether I have, I've got two daughters, whether I have sons that be, become scouting, Joe has a son, whether these guys become scouts and go on to become eagles and so on, Troop 12 uh, plays such a big part in my life and a part of all my brothers making eagles uh, and so on because of, of the example that was set, the leadership that we got. Uh, from Mr. Decker and Mr. Strong, Mr. Gower and Mr. Day and so many others, Mr. Wilson. And I'm just, I'm glad to be here and, and glad that, uh, that 
that I was able to, to, to be just a small part of Speed Quest. Right now, uh, I have a company called Classic Sportswear Incorporated, and we sell uh, custom printed sportswear uh, to schools and, and clubs and organizations uh, throughout most of the southern states.
John here. We're uh, the scout leader and the scout master. So we had a fine time. We, like uh, everyone said, it's the, uh, the organization and the camaraderie and all of that uh, that we had such a good time in 2012. But uh, there was just a few things that, that uh, uh, those were small things a lot of times uh, that you'd run across in scouting uh, that would sink so deep. Uh, for reasons I don't know that later on that you'd find out, like uh, the way Samson would back the trailer up uh, in the van. He would uh, he'd back this trailer up and it would be going in all the ways and he'd put it right where he wanted it. And I just couldn't figure that out to, to save my life. And so later on, uh, I'd work with some trailers and stuff like that, and it's, it's relatively easy it's just to back it on up. But that always amazed me. But there's a lot of little small things like that get out of scouting and they stay with you, uh, not to mention the bigger things. And it was always a pleasure and, and uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was great to be with all you guys. I'm, uh, I presently work for Marion Corporation, a local refinery in Mobile. I'm, uh, I'm the operations supervisor at the, uh, at the refinery. So I've been with them for about 10 years. And uh, I, uh, I got my
Billy Oak. And I, I guess I can't even remember I joined the year I joined the Central Army. Like 1952, 53, 51. I can't remember. Yes. <laughs> Too many years. Yeah, 51, but it has to be 52. <laughs> yeah. It has to be 52. We are, I have some fond memories of the Boy Scouts. I guess my fondest memory is Troop 12. It was, uh, Troop was just starting back up when my twin brother and I joined, and George was a ringleader. And uh, I guess the thing I remember most, we went to camp one year to the top on and he keeps telling that old fox boy. <laughs> you remember the big old boy that was scared of everything? Yeah. I can't even remember his name. He's bigger than George. He got up to camp. George got, Decker got out doing that scratch on the wall. <laughs> and this boy had to be, you know, six and one, and muscle, and he crawled in bed with the smallest guy there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. But I guess the year I remember most, we went to push in Taha, and, and Decker had a death in the and had to leave. And I was a senior patrol member then. So Decker left, he said, we don't have any stores, we will put you in stores. Well, I think the biggest thrill I got is we won every top award they gave us. I was elected to all of the arrows. My twin brother got the best campus medal, and that's the only time I ever seen Decker do a flip off a log back <laughs> <laughs> Corps of Engineers now for 25 years. 